Hey everyone, um, here to talk about um, you know something the Doe Heat Exchange community is considering currently, which is uh, potentially looking into defining a Doe Heat Exchange specification for OpenRack V3. I think this is a, a follow-up to the presentation that Juan Carlos and Jabari just made. So just quickly introducing myself, uh, my name is John Fernandez. I am a thermal engineer in Meta's plot platform hardware team. Um, and I'm the sub-project lead for the ACS Doe Heat Exchanger uh, sub-project. Uh, and I'm here to talk about um, looking into a Doe Heat Exchanger specification for OpenRack V3. So some, some background over here. Um, uh, obviously, uh, OpenRack V3 has been very uh, prevalent where, during this year's uh, OCP Summit, uh, starting out with the uh, ORV3 frame uh, and power subsystem that Steve and the, uh, the team talked about yesterday. And then today morning, we've had uh, Glenn and the team, and including Norman, talking about uh, components that go into OpenRack V3 that enable liquid cooling um, natively um, as part of bringing up this new generation of OpenRack. So um, what we're looking at is, well, to complete, well, the feature set of OpenRack V3, um, there appears to be uh, you know, potential to look at defining a dough heat exchanger solution that would be complementary to OpenRack V3 and would also be compliant with uh, products that are already being developed or defined uh, for this generation of rack, which includes the blind mate manifolds, uh, RPUs and CDUs, uh, large interchangeable QCs, basically manual drip disconnections that Norman talked about, and other related areas that could benefit from uh, sort of a, a robust and complete liquid cooling ecosystem for OpenRack V3. Um, in addition, we also want to, there's also potential to look at supporting other endeavors, such as uh, data center efficiency, uh, that's a result of adopting liquid cooling uh, at the rack. Um, one byproduct of that is uh, potential for heat reuse. Um, and then looking at Sustainability and circularity, which is uh, going to be a very important theme uh, for the industry in general as we move forward. So with regards to defining a dough heat exchanger for uh, OpenRack V3, we obviously need to size it for the frame. So a uh, couple of areas that would be sort of given as part of this effort would be standardizing the mounting features, whether that's an adapter frame, to mount your existing door heat exchanger solution to the rack, or basically just define um, an, an adapter that would natively hold your door heat exchanger solution and interface with OpenRack V3. Um, as is outlined in the uh, door heat exchanger requirements document that's already been contributed to OCP, um, we care a lot about the weight restrictions. In fact, we've had our partners from the ACF uh, come to the dough heat exchanger calls and request some baseline information on dough heat exchanger products that a lot of our vendors already um, have as part of their, uh, their portfolio. Um, oops. Oh, that's not showing up over there. Sorry. I have a pop-up showing up on my computer for some reason. Uh, we're also looking at defining overall dough heat exchanger solution dimensions. Uh, to function with other ORV3 features. So obviously we're talking about OpenRack V3 fully kitted out for liquid cooling. So that would mean that uh, the interfaces that we define for the door heat exchanger should not uh, detract from adoption of other features such as the blind mate manifolds and in-rack CDU or RPU of some kind, um, but also take advantage of existing features in OpenRack V3 which would be the existing um, DC, 48 volt DC power system that's already in the rack. So potentially looking at power delivery from the rack bus bar to the door heat exchanger. Next we come on to the part that really has to do with, um, which is why we are, I'm actually up here trying to make an appeal to the community, which is, well, what does the end user want, right? So from that perspective, it has more to do with performance requirements. So on this slide over here, we've just outlined an example 
um, of how you would define what the performance requirements of a Doe heat exchanger could be. So looking at OpenRack V3, if we assume that we just have one rectifier redundancy, that basically means we have to support up to 33 kilowatts of rack power. In this case, it's sort of an extreme case because you're assuming all of that heat is going into air. But that could be a baseline of uh, looking at defining the solution. So you, know, you would assume, OK, my servers um, definitely want to operate up to 30 degrees C ambient. And on the facility water side, we want to drive up that temperature as high as possible. So potentially, you could define a 27 degrees C facility water set point, which you know, Jabari and Juan Carlos just talked about is very much doable. If you, if you design your solution for OpenRack V3. You know, and on this slide, we have a few calculations that ba would basically determine what those performance curves would need to look like to basically enable that capability. So as I said previously, the physical interfaces are very important when you define a specification, but you don't want to get into the nitty gritty details of what would constitute a very specific door heat exchange solution you basically focus on the physical interfaces and define them appropriately. So in this case, as I've said, we, have already, we already have these defined as part of requirements document that's already contributed. So we definitely want to comply with that, but focus specifically on OpenRack V3. So that would mean, okay, where do the, liquid, where do the LC connections for the door heat exchanger go? Well, fundamentally, we would want to support both top and bottom connections. So that way, the solution could be uh, employed in a data center where you ha either have a raised flow or you have a concrete slab. Um, we want to talk about power connections. This would be both standard AC, which you know, probably would not require much from the rack. But if you wanted to hook into the 48-volt bus bar, then we would need to have some sort of solution for that. And we've actually had some preliminary discussions talking about you know, what, what such a cable solution would look like, um, you know, and how that could be contributed as part of the rack and power group in order to support uh, a DC version uh, of a dough heat exchanger solution. And then finally, we have communication. Um, you know, you're investing in liquid cooling your rack. Your rack's full of IT gear. It's very expensive. You obviously want to monitor it through its operation. So it's important to define these communication uh, interfaces, whether that means your dough heat exchanger talks to some sort of rack management device that's already been contributed through OCP, or go straight to the top of the rack switch and then upstreams operational information from your dough heat exchanger, such as, okay, what are the temperatures, what are your fan speeds, or anything that you would deem required uh, to basically keep an eye on the operation of this solution. So let's talk about benefits to OpenRack V3 and beyond. Um, as I said initially, um, you know, OpenRack V3 from, a, from the start has had a focus on enabling liquid cooling. So we definitely, there's definitely a benefit to defining a door heat exchanger solution specific to OpenRack V3. So we can have what I consider as a fully architected and flexible solution, you know, when any end user decides to adopt OpenRack V3. Um, we, in talking with the vendors, we also acknowledge that there's potential for multi-generational use. So it's not unheard of that a door heat exchanger solution could be in operation for 10 years or longer. Specifically, if you're talking about HPC customers, I, as I've heard, they, they have very stringent requirements for reliability. So that's, that's something that could be worked into this specification as well. And most importantly, we want to enable or support any existing OCP efforts, such as sustainability or the circular economy, right? So going back to the 10 years, and you look at the rest of the liquid cooling architecture in OpenRack V3, is that something that's possible? And that's, that's actually something that we are discussing with the coal plate and sustainability groups at a very early stage to figure out, okay, if you have a hybrid solution, which is basically coal plates plus a dough heat exchanger, yes, you can support really, really high rack powers, um, but, you know, is there potential for multi-generational use? Because that would be really appealing to a lot of, uh, you know, uh, companies that are looking to deploy at scale, but also need to keep an eye on, you know, their carbon footprint and so on and so forth. And then other 
such facility level initiatives such as heat reuse or just general energy efficient operation. I, I don't think people are gonna stop talking about PUE. So that's another potential area of looking at with this solution. So call to action. So obviously I'm up here trying to make a case for a door heat exchange specification for OpenRack V3 and obviously in the community, the vendors and the rest of the community can obviously set up a base specification. But what would be really great is if we had someone in, in, the, com in the general OCP community who's been attending OCP uh, this time and been like, okay, OpenRack V3 looks really great, right? Uh, I would love to do liquid cooling, maybe 100% liquid cooling. Come talk to us, because we definitely want to see end users sort of drive these specifications, because that's when, that's when we can really put in material that can end up as a product. So this is just me up here soliciting those who are interested in having a fully architected ORV3 solution, in this case by contributing a door heat exchanger specification. So please get involved. This QR code will lead you to the door heat exchanger uh, subproject on the uh, Open Compute webpage. Um, you know, and we would love to have more people join our calls and tell us what we need to contribute through OCP to basically lower the barrier uh, to entry for liquid cooling in general. So, thank you. Do we have time for questions? <laughs> Got a minute, maybe, maybe a question. Can you please walk up to the mic because we are recording this, thank you. consider a uh, passive solution? It looks like you have power to that for fans. Have you looked at what the impact of a passive solution would be? Um, so we could, we could certainly write into the spec um, considerations for both a passive as well as an active solution. Um, I think we all acknowledge that with an active solution, you can probably get higher capacities and also have to worry less about airflow containment within the rack and leakage and so on and so forth. Uh, but the requirements document that we have already contributed to OCP doesn't make a distinction. It calls both out, so I don't see a reason why we couldn't make a consideration for both uh, for a specification for OpenRack V3. Yeah, I All right, thanks all. <laughs>